Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. It's Brittany here with another video to help you guys live a happy, healthy, awesome life in a wheelchair. And today I am sitting here with you guys drinking my tea. I have a head cold and I'm gonna to talk to you guys about nerve pain um, because every single time I get sick for some reason, I get horrible, horrible nerve pain. I'll sort of tell you guys what my nerve pain feels like when I get it. And then I'm gonna talk about what I've tried for it and what I currently do for my nerve pain. So uh, let's get into it. Before I do though, I'm gonna tell you guys what I'm drinking in my cup. I'm gonna start this because I always drink tea and so I thought it would be neat to show you or tell you guys what I'm drinking uh, in my teacup all the time when I am doing videos. So today I'm drinking nettle tea and it is good for so many things. It's anti-inflammatory, it's good for menopausal symptoms, um, it is good for your bladder, it is a diuretic so it will flush your kidneys. Um, I got sort of, um, not hooked on, uh, uh, I guess set in the direction of nettle tea when um, I was looking for natural bladder uh, health things and this was one of them so uh, I drink it sometimes now but it's good for a whole bunch of other things it's uh, reduces allergies so lots of good things nettle tea and I love these little tea bags that have like sayings on them and this one says beauty is not caused it just is which is Emily Dickinson so that's awesome okay back to nerve pain the nerve pain that i get comes in sort of two forms essentially one is below my level of injury which is like a burning tingling uh legs falling asleep kind of sensation that gets really intense uh if the pain if i get nerve pain it's always there my legs always feel like they're asleep but if i get really bad nerve pain my legs feel like they're on fire like they're just burning it just feels like a really hot tingling kind of uh, white noise thing in my legs so that's the nerve pain that I get in my legs sorry my nose is plugged and it's I sound awful but uh, I'm still showing up for you guys um, and then I get nerve pain at my level of injury and in my left uh, arm because I have um, nerve damage going to this arm so at my level of injury, I don't usually have nerve pain all the time, but every once in a while I get nerve pain, which I get when I'm sick and I get every once in a while just for no reason, which is like a shooting, fizzling out. If I can imagine like being like tasered or something or like poked with a cattle prod, that's what I imagine that it would feel like. So um, it's at my level of injury here and here and it just goes down and feels like it like fizzles out there and it gets like the t the feeling gets so intense and sometimes it's like it drives me mad like totally crazy um and then i'll talk about sort of like what i've done to sort of handle that craziness if it feels like that but that's what it feels like it sort of feels like this like intense like tingling um and like i'm being electrocuted at, at my chest level and then in my left arm I have hypersensitivity, so it doesn't actually hurt unless I'm touching it. Um, and then it's not all the time that it's super hypersensitive, but when it gets hypersensitive, just the littlest touch is like painful. And I have like some weird nerve things where if I go like this, I get a nerve or I get a like feeling down here. And if I touch here, I can feel it in my arm a little bit, which is like really weird because it's like the nerve signals are crossed or something for my arm and my chest, which is really weird. Um, but yeah, if I go like this, I get a, like a I get a signal in my chest down here, which is weird. So that's what my nerve pain feels like in my legs. It feels like burning, tingling. Uh, in my chest level, it feels like being electrocuted, or an intense like tickle, fizzling out. Um, and then in my left arm, it feels like hypersensitivity where it's just like, it feels like so painful if anybody, even wind, even wind is like, ugh. so anything rubbing on it will just drive me totally, totally bonkers. So that's what it feels like. But what actually is nerve pain? Um, they know that it is basically like abnormal signals that are coming from damaged nerves, um, essentially. That's what nerve pain is, but why you get it in your legs when you can't really feel your legs at all or why I get it in my legs if I can't feel my legs at all. 
um, is sort of a mystery. Um, and the way a doctor explained it to me is basically just that my same as phantom sensation, uh, my brain is sort of like manufacturing a feeling that isn't there. And sometimes my brain can manufacture a pain signal, um, which is, it's kind of like fibromyalgia, I guess. Like fibromyalgia is real pain, like the muscle hurts, but it's just abnormal uh, signals coming from those nerves that create a perception of pain because your brain is the perceiver of things because um, without the perception of it, you can't feel anything, which is why like Tylenol, it reduces the perception of pain uh, and reduces the pain itself because you can't perceive it anymore or why I can drop a weight on my foot and it's not painful to me because my brain can't actually interpret the pain. So nerve pain is essentially abnormal nerve signals coming from damaged nerves and abnormal uh, perceptions of pain in your brain centers that uh, those nerves go to. And in order to reduce nerve pain, typically, you take medication, gabapentin, Lyrica, there's a couple different um, big name ones that people take for nerve pain, uh, and they reduce the activity of those brain centers. So they can make you really drowsy um, and just kind of groggy and all of those kinds of things, but they actually do work to reduce the nerve pain. So now that I've talked about what my nerve pain feels like um, and what nerve pain actually is, I'll talk about what I've personally done for my nerve pain. Uh, and what I'm currently doing for my nerve pain. So um, I've only ever tried medication once and I tried gabapentin and it made me extremely drowsy, like to the point that I was driving um, and I almost fell asleep and like went off the road. So that was pretty scary. I remember like falling asleep like in, at restaurants and I fell asleep once in the mall. I was in HMV, which is like um, where you could buy CDs and stuff. And I was it, like in an aisle and I like literally just like dozed off and my brother like came around and was like, hello, are you sleeping? Um, so that's how drowsy the gabapentin made me. I'm not sure how it makes other people feel. Um, and I was supposed to be on it daily or at least back then, that's what my doctor told me. So I don't know if it's one of those drugs that like if you have nerve pain, you can just take it here and there or if you have to take it all the time in order for the drug to work properly. If you guys, if somebody knows um, the answers to that question, you can put it in the comments. And if you use gabapentin, please put in the comments how it makes you feel. If there was like a period of time where you had to get used to the drowsiness, all of those things are really good for other people to um, read when they come to watch this video. So yeah, please put in the comments if you have any experience with nerve pain medications and how they've sort of made you feel. Um, so yeah, that was my only sort of foray with medication for nerve pain. And I just decided that I don't want to live like in a drowsy state forever. And I don't want to make things like driving more dangerous. Um, so I just, I went off of it and I never really went back on it. And now, um, the, that still plays into it the the thing about the drowsiness that still plays into my decision not to go on the drugs but i do a lot more research now on the side effects of drugs and one of the big side effects of gabapentin that i read recently was that it depresses your respiratory rate and there's actually like a lot of deaths from it because your respiratory rate um it slows down so much at night that you actually just pass away in your sleep which is crazy no doctor has ever told me that if you are on gabapentin, please don't freak out. Go talk to your doctor. I am not a doctor. I'm not advising anybody to do anything with their medications. So please don't stop your medications without talking to your doctor. I am saying, however, that that is something that I read that is concerning. So if you are on gabapentin, please go talk to your doctor, maybe about the dosage or um, about the reduction respiratory rate and if it's a concern for you. So those are kinds of the, those are the reasons that I've sort of shied away from the drugs, just the drowsiness and some of the side effects. So what do I actually do for nerve pain then if I don't take any drugs? Well, for years, it was just grit and bear it. Um, and most of the time that was okay because I would get sporadic uh, bouts of nerve pain um, that lasted a couple days and then, you know, it would be manageable. Even right now, my legs have like that weird tingly feeling but it's not, it's not bothersome. Like it's not ruining my day. It's not, it's not making me angry. 
Um, my hypersensitivity in my left arm is uncomfortable some days, but it's not, you know, something that I can't live with. Every once in a while, though, my nerve pain has gotten to the point where I would be like screaming um, and it would last for like three, four or five days with that um, what I would call like being electrocuted at my chest, that is worse than any burning in my legs could ever be. So, um, yeah, that was like times like that. I was like, Oh my God, I need to take medication. Um, and because I didn't want to take medication, I had to figure out something else to do for my nerve pain. So recently, I think probably for like the last year, um, because I don't want to take medication and every once in a while those sporadic bouts of nerve pain at my chest level have gotten really bad. Um, I've started doing something called cognitive, cognitive behavioral therapy by doing, um, things, uh, that, how am I supposed to say this? Sorry, not changing the pain itself, but the perception of the pain by changing your reaction to the pain. So that's what I'm trying to say. I'm editing this video and I just want to make abundantly clear that the cognitive behavioral therapy that I am talking about is not formal therapy with a therapist or licensed psychologist or counselor. It is just a method of treatment that I've read about that I have applied to my own life um, and I've used it for many things including anxiety. There are many, many resources online books, articles, um, all that kind of stuff on how to properly use cognitive behavioral therapy and the strategies to use that you can apply to pain management, anxiety, depression, um, phobias, whatever it is that you're dealing with. So I just want to make clear that I'm not going to a therapist. I am using cognitive behavioral therapy, which is a method of treatment for different kinds of things. So um, when I was getting the really bad nerve pain and I would get the like, the, the like being electrocuted at my chest thing, then I would like immediately tense up and I would be like, ow, 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 ow. And I would do whatever I could to take it away. I would like rub my arm really quickly because it was like distraction and it seemed to help. I would like squeeze my chest. I would do all of these things because the pain was really bad. And when I started reading more about um, pain and the perception of pain, the more you focus on the pain, the, the higher the chance of the brain centers that perceive that pain of growing. And when the brain centers and the neural networks around that perception of pain grow, what's gonna happen? That pain is gonna be more intense. And so I tried to reduce my reaction to the pain and start thinking different thoughts when I had the pain. So now when I get that nerve pain, I try my very hardest not to tense up. I let the pain happen, I notice the pain, and I try and make a different, I try and say different things in my head about the pain. That's interesting. Oh, there's that nerve pain again. Um, it, it'll pass. Different things like that that I say when I'm getting those like intense moments and sometimes they only last for like 20 seconds but they're really really intense and so I change my reaction to the pain I calm my nervous system down I calm my thoughts down I don't say anything to myself like I can't live with this this is never gonna la never gonna end um, because sometimes I would go I can't handle this anymore um, it's never, what if this never ends? I never say stuff like that to myself because obviously if my brain is perceiving the pain, the more active and jived up that my brain is, the worse that pain is gonna be and stress just makes everything worse because your brain is just swimming in chemicals. So I try to just calm all of that stuff down and it's gotten better. Every once in a while, yesterday I had a really, really bad day with that nerve pain that is like electrocuting my chest. Um, and I tried to stay as calm as I could all day. There were a few times where I was like, oh, I can't handle it, stop, please stop. But there was like twice maybe that that happened out of like a 24 hour period. And the rest of the time I just went about my day. Um, I didn't try to keep my arms really close to my chest because normally I would keep my arms close to my chest because for some reason I think that's going to like stop, I don't know, stop the nerve pain. Um, and it never does. Um, so I, yeah, I just try and do what I can to, to keep going with my day, 
to have good thoughts uh, around the pain, change the, the reaction to the pain, um, and therefore reduce the perception of the pain. So I don't know if that was like, it's not maybe the easiest answer because it definitely takes uh, mindfulness and it takes time to reduce the brain centers that are perceiving the pain because uh, it's kind of like one of those things if you don't use it, you lose it. Eventually your brain just calms down. It's, it's the same thing with the, the health OCD that I have. I get compulsive thoughts about my health and I just have to calm myself down and tell myself different things, talk to myself differently inside of my own head so that I'm not ruminating on the, the bad or scary thoughts about my health. Um, and cognitive behavioral therapy is really common in you know anxiety, conditions like anxiety and things like that. Uh, and I just basically read up on it uh, on how it can be used for pain as well. And it's been working for me to reduce the perception of my nerve pain or at least my reaction to my nerve pain, which makes my day better and my life better when I have that nerve pain. So that's that's how I deal with my nerve pain. Um, it's, not, it's not maybe the answer that people are looking for if they're like, is there a miracle pill or something? Um, no, I'm sorry, uh, not for me anyway. There are medications out there that you can you can go get your doctor to give you or you can ask them about, but for me, they're just not the solution that I am looking for, so I try to do it another way. And cognitive behavioral therapy seems to work for me. So just to recap, nerve pain, what is it? Abnormal signals from damaged nerves uh, that go to a part of your brain that essentially has a, a perception of pain and Every once in a while, that brain center just sort of manufactures a worse perception of that pain that's coming from those damaged nerves. My nerve pain feels like burning uh, and intense tingling in my legs and my chest level, it feels like, um, like being electrocuted. And then in my left arm, my nerve pain is just hypersensitivity um, to touch, which can get really painful. Um, I don't take medication because I don't like the side effects and I don't like being drowsy and I seem to have figured out um, a strategy with cognitive behavioral therapy to reduce my perception and my reaction to the pain that I have to live with for the rest of my life probably. So that's that's how I do my nerve pain stuff. Um, I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you guys have other ways that you deal with your nerve pain please put it in the comments because I always say that it is a like a wealth of knowledge uh, down there because people come for one thing and they find a whole bunch of other people's opinions as well. Uh, and my opinion is not, not always the best one or the one that they're going to uh, connect with. So it's good for them to be able to read other people's experiences as well in the comments. So if you have a minute and you have experience with either medications or some other strategy to reduce nerve pain or cope with it, then please take the time to uh, write that in the comments. That's all I got for you guys today. I hope you have an awesome day. I hope the next video I make, I'm feeling better. But until then, I will catch you on another video. Bye guys.